Yo, what's up? It's your boy, E.T. Welcome to another edition of Mass Impact, the educational podcast. Now, look, the reason why I started this, I truly believe that education is the way to close the gap, the wealth gap, the digital divide gap, the opportunity gap. Look, the American dream gap. Can I be honest? Everybody's not experiencing the American dream in the way it's supposed to be experienced. So the reason why we started the Mass Impact, the educational podcast, is to close that gap. Now, look, Mass is simple. It means motivate, actionable steps, which means what? We're going to give you strategies every week. So we're not just going to motivate you and inspire you, which is important, but we're going to give you actionable steps. And look, it's a support system, y'all. Thus, Mass. It's your boy, E.T. Now you know. Let's go. Yo, what up? What's up? What's up? Hey, it's your boy, E.T., man. Super excited. Mass Impact, the podcast. Um, I mean, I think we always need to, you know, uh, have massive impact. Uh, but when we look at um, what's going on in the world today, you know, if there's ever a time where we needed to make positive impact on our youth and just the world in general, you know, that, that time is now. I, I mean, um, I'm watching TV and it's, I'm reading newspaper and it's just like, if we ever needed uh, humans to be superheroes, you know, we need it now, you know, motivation. Uh, and when I say motivation, I'm talking about both uh, extrinsic and intrinsic. The suicide rate is higher for our youth than it's ever been before. You know, and a lot of it is they just don't have a reason for living, you know. And so here's why motivation is important. It's important because, you know, they need to have something to wake up to. They need to have something to aspire to. They need to have some. I know I, I do. You know, so I'm waking up and I'm in different parts of the world. Why I just need something to do, you know, while I'm here. So that's important. But we also need action steps. You know, we need action steps. We need to know how do I do it. Right. And that's what this uh, podcast is all about. We're going to give you some some tips on how to make it happen. And then more importantly, we all need somebody to lean on. We all need uh, a support system. And I'm telling you, uh, I, in my in my devotion time with the Lord the other day, I was just like, God, thank you for allowing me not only to do the work, but to have somebody to do the work with. You know, I was like, man, God, I'm blessed. I've been married over 32 years, you know, and uh, you can imagine a, a lot of growth has happened, you know what I'm saying, in 32 years, and to have somebody to grow with. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know if I would be where I am today if I didn't have somebody to grow with. So we're here for you, all right? Uh, a lot of you are struggling uh, to find your community. Like, we want to be that community for you. You're looking for positive people. You're looking for dreamers. You're looking for people who look at solutions and not just the problem. And Mass Impact, you know, we're here for you. So as always, you know, I don't, I, I bring what I bring. I don't always um, uh, know the details, right? So we go to Katie uh, for the details. <laughs> Katie, what, what are we talking about today? Yeah, we are going to talk about parents today, families, um, as educators, uh, wherever we are in the education space, how are we going to engage families? Because we know that when we do that, we're going to make the greatest impact for our kids. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, I was at the game um, not too long ago. And one of the things I think I think in Seattle, the Seahawks, uh, they call it the 12th man. Right. And that's their fans. They call it the 12th man, oh, okay. uh, you know, and uh, what what was crazy. Uh, I made it to the opening game, the Bills versus the Rams. And what I had ne I've never seen this in my life. We're talking about parents. Right. And uh, parents to me would represent, you know, that 12th man. You know, mm -hmm. parents are, um, you know, that X factor while they yeah. are there. You have to be intentional and deliberate about using them. Uh, yeah. But what I saw, what I saw in LA, I've never, I never saw before. Um, I think uh, Buffalo was attempting to, you know, get their first touchdown, and they, um, the crowd started screaming. And I was like, hold up, that, that's not they're not supposed to be screaming for. And I looked around; it was more Buffalo Bill fans in the stand than it was LA Ram fans in the stand. And I know people probably watching from home thought LA had home court advantage. And they did. The Rams had home court advantage. I was literally on a plane flying from Detroit to L.A. And there was Bills fans, whatever the little sound they make or do, they were doing it throughout the whole plane. Like yeah. they weren't like on decorum. 
You know, they weren't, you know, they, they weren't like, this is rude. The lady in first class started, go, 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 and she just started making some noise. <laughs> and in the back, they started making a noise. And then they like bills. And I'm like, whoa, that's phenomenal. Mm. And so I just want to say, as we start this discussion, schools, we 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 need that, that's that six man off the bench. Mm-hmm. That's parents. We need the parents' energy, right? Because what I noticed about the bills is that they disrupted, you know, the normal pattern, right? Yep. And as parents, we have the ability to disrupt some of the negativity that's going on and solve some of the problems. Like, I look at parents, if, if principals are smart, man, you can look at parents as a task force. You mm-hmm. know, it's like the Green Beret. You know, you can look at them as a Navy SEAL, right? And here are a group of individuals who are working on behalf of the school without some of the day-to-day challenges that teachers have. Let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, with bureaucracy, with time, with legislation, like their teachers to some extent have their hands tied up in a way that parents don't. You know, yeah. pa- parents are like, uh, you know, people always talk about CJ and me. I'm like, oh, that's good. That's mm-hmm. offense and defense. But Carl and Nikki, they represent special teams. You know, and special teams play a very critical role in the game. And so Carl is able to, do some things uh, on Instagram. You know, Nikki's able to do some stuff on YouTube that just takes us to a whole that take us to a whole other level. And I don't know if y'all been watching uh, my Instagram page lately, but those guys got me looking like you know a superhero. <laughs> like, like I don't get any rest. You know, like I'm all over the world. You know, and so parents uh, could actually be that task force, that special teams. Mm-hmm. They could be they could be the individuals that you know. Um, galvanize support resources you know help us save time help us plan and prepare you know so i I don't know you know uh who wants to go next but you know i just want i want schools not to see parents as a disruption and as a distraction but to really see parents as a way to develop the school and the mission of the school Definitely. ET, I tell you all the time when you talk, man, I feel like I'm like jump roped. I'm ready to jump in that thing. <laughs> Double dutch. <laughs> but listen, let me tell you something. Uh, parent engagement is the ultimate cheat code. I remember when you, so you took me back and we talked about the 12th man. If I'm going to date myself a little bit, I played Division One college football. And um, it was a video game, NCAA. Everyone played NCAA. Do you play Madden or you play NCAA? But I remember the feature came out in NCAA. Uh, where the crowd, they had something called rattle, meaning whenever you play at a team. So if I'm, you know, uh, Howard University, I go to play University of Michigan or whatnot, the or Michigan State, uh, the, the crowd for the away team. So the away team will come into the stadium and the crowd, whenever you go to run the play, your control shake, they'll mm-hmm. rattle you. Uh-huh. The rattle feature to because that home that. Field advantage is a beast because yeah. the, the goal is about distractions. So when you think of young people, young people have so many distractions. And in order to create that total package student, the way I look at it, it goes teacher, coach, or whatever that enrichment opportunity is, and parent or home or garden, Mm -hmm. whatever that is. That creates that total package for that student. Uh, We know what's coming up is a very important um, event that happened in our country, as you know, is 9-11. However, 9-10. 910 is World Suicide Prevention Day. Mm. World Suicide Prevention Day. And 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 that's ultra important because young people across the world are impacted with so many distractions that in some cases permanent decisions are made over temporary problems. And we want our young people to stay on track and to stay engaged. And that parent is that cheat code. When a young person leave that classroom and they leave that practice facility, they got to go home somewhere. And it's important for that parent or that guardian to be completely engaged. I know that our parents, when they send young people off to school, they want what's best for their kid. I don't care what status, socioeconomic, I don't care. They want what's best for their kid. And it's important for that educator or that administrator, whatever role or state you have in education, the goal is to be visible, vocal and vigilant in that young person's life. They got to see you. They have to hear you and understand what the expectations are. Then they got to be pressed and you have to model the behaviors that you're expecting from that young person. So the parent, I, I, I welcome with open arms, 
parent, the good, the bad, whatever comes with it. I just had uh, on uh, two Wednesday this week um, a, a meet and greet with all my families. And I saw that. You saw my meet and greet with my oh, family. Good. That's great. Oh, no doubt. And I said, hey, submit whatever question. I don't care what it is. I'm not dodging no smoke. I want you to feel safe. When you mm -hmm. bring your kids to my building, I want you to feel safe. And mm -hmm. I want you to know that your babies or your young person is in the best hands and have the best education possible. So we and we welcome, when I say we, I'm speaking for educators. We welcome parents. Parent engagement, that's that total package for that young person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, love that. I think sometimes the challenge is making sure that as educators, we help the parents and the families to feel welcome too. And, and for educators, it's important for us to remember that not all families have had positive past experiences with schools, mm -hmm. or they might not always feel, even if, if we're on our side thinking like, oh, we love the parents, we want them to come in. We have to make sure that they get that message that you're saying there, because they may have not always felt that way from educators they have worked with in the past, um, or they've maybe just not always felt comfortable being in a school building. And so our job, I, I think, is that that's the really important piece is not just knowing that philosophy of like, we want them here, but making sure that they hear that message from us and that they feel welcome and that we like hold space for acknowledging that maybe they haven't always felt that way in the past and that's okay, but we want to get them in the doors and help them to feel welcome and engaged moving forward. For sure. You know, and I, I think that, um, you know, this partnership of, of parenthood is of mutuality, right? Like it, that's a critical piece in making sure that we're all successful. And sometimes I think the parents are left out and they're being told afterwards, OK, mm -hmm. this is how the school is moving. And it shouldn't be that way. They should be a critical part of the conversation. So I like what Doc is saying, inviting them in, you know, making them feel safe and welcomed is really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah no question. Creative in doing that, right? Like I know we're thinking of open houses and conferences as like those like traditional ways that we see and greet parents. But I love that you're talking about a, a meet and greet um, and just, I think we have to think outside the box, right? Of how do we engage families and in ways that meet them where they are and help them to feel comfortable. Um, a couple quick things I thought of right away when we were thinking about families and engaging them. I have two educators that I've worked with in the past. I, of course, I would have loved to invite them here today. I didn't, didn't think of it till last minute, but they're both ELL teachers. And so they have worked really hard to do creative things to help their families to feel really welcome and to come in their building. So one of them, uh, is a quilter. She loves to create quilts. So that's her gift, right? So it's interesting thinking about the way that you can use the gifts that God gives you. That's like her little passion side project. But she worked with her students, so all her ELL students, on creating quilt squares that represented their families and their um, cultures and where they their families had come from and things. And they mm. had the families help with it. And then she had quilt days where the families came in and they had all these quilts on display that represented all the different countries these families had come from. And I just thought it was so special and so unique that she took like her gift and was used it to engage families. And she also said many of those families had said they'd never been in invited in that kind of way into the school before. And so they just felt so special. They brought food, you know, to, to represent where they had come from with their quilts that were on display. And, uh, you know, just, we have to be creative and think outside the box of ways that how can we get families in the doors and feeling special and like their voice matters. Um, wherever those voices are coming from. Can I share, here's the thing with parents and, and educators that, that are watching this podcast, you know, like I know, kids in elementary school are walking around with cell phones. Kids in elementary, I'm talking third graders, second graders, fifth grader, they all have cell phones. They're not buying those cell phones. Those parents are buying those cell phones. Those parents are staying in contact with their kids. One way to completely engage our families is you have to, you must embrace social media. Yeah. You must embrace it. Our parents are on Instagram. Our parents, listen, our parents are millennials now, sometimes Z generation. Yeah. The, parent, yeah. the, parent, the parents are getting younger and younger. Our parents are in their, you know, early 30s, late 20s, mid 20s, you know, mid 30s, you know, 40s. We're all on social media, Facebook. And you have to engage that. It's very important, even if you do have, opportunities where parents are invited into the classroom or into the schoolhouse, opportunity for them to participate 
via live, whether it's just, just having having an eye into the classroom. The, uh, technology is all over the world. And we saw through the pandemic how we utilize technology to supplement instruction because of the pandemic. Take advantage of that opportunity. Put a lot of information on that social media. And we talk about expectations. Now, in the education world, we can get caught up in that education jargon, MTSS, multi-tier system of support. Parents don't know what that means. Right. <laughs> You're talking over up here. You know, you got to right. bring it all the way down and let the parents know what that expectation is. And the class will say, hey, listen, we have a system in place to support your young person, no matter what the challenges may be. It can be behavioral. It can be academic. It could be with regards to social and emotional learning. Here's the supports we have in place. And here's a toolkit that you can use at home to support us with the expectations that we're asking for our young people in the schoolhouse. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah. You, you know, Bondell, you said something earlier I think is important. Um, we need to get our parents involved early and often. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents don't need to think that they are you know, a happenstance. Like they don't need to think that, you know, you 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 weren't considered in the in the in the conception. Yeah. Like they they need to they need to know that I'm not even trying to move without you. <laughs> you know, like we're not we're like we're not trying to do anything with your child without mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's I think that's a problem sometimes is not just when you involve them, but when you involve them. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I think I'm an afterthought. Right. And this was a challenge I had in the beginning mm -hmm. of my life, you know, because I thought I was an afterthought, you know, as a human. I'm like, oh, my, you were 17 years old. Like you didn't plan for me. Oh, my dad, you weren't even in my life. So I was an afterthought. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a hurtful feeling when you think you're not being considered like you weren't mm -hmm. planned. Yeah, right? that's 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 different. You know, planned parenthood and unplanned parenthood. Like that's just a different. It plays on your psyche when you think. Oh, y'all picked me up because it was only 10 people to play and I was mm -hmm. the 10th person. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't the number one draft. Right. That's a different feeling when you feel like you're a number one draft versus you got picked up last in the seventh round. You know, it, 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 it does something to your psyche. Yeah. So it does something to our parents when we talk over them. Yeah. When we try to use these big fancy words, mm -hmm. so, uh, when we try to, you know, isolate them and feel, make them feel inferior, mm -hmm. you know, that's not a good feeling. So we're just talking human right now. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like at the end of the day, these are their children. So I want to make sure that we not only involve them, but they understand that they are early part. OK, they're early part of, of, of the planning process. And then the other thing we have to help them understand is. We mama bears and papa bears just like you are. Yeah. Like, it's the, like we on the same, like you don't have, like you ain't got to be a mama bear because I'm a mama bear. I'm a papa bear when it comes to your child. Yeah. They need to understand that. Like you're not sending your child to us and we at war. We're not at war. We want the exact same thing for your child. I want the exact same thing. Now, there's insight that you have that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Let's use that intel. There's insight that I have that you don't have as an educator. Let's use that intel. For, for the for the benefit of your child. For sure. Right? Okay. It's some stuff you know I don't know. You you know, um, I had a young man that I was fortunate. Uh, his father taught me in college. Super grateful for his father. Um, his father was one of the few um deans, African American deans, you know, at Michigan State University. And so his father understood where I was coming from and he was able to help me. So I was working with his son the other day and I said, listen to me. You know, bro, I know you. Your mom died at eight years old. That was a traumatic experience. Like, understand, you don't, you don't, you, you are right. right. <laughs> this is how, you, like, you lost your mom, bro. Like, you lost that sensitive person. You lost that nurturer. So, of yeah. course, you gonna, you're going to be a step behind a little bit on something. It is what it is. You lost your mom, bro. Like, don't, he's like, oh, man, you understand me. That's the first thing he said, Bondell, you understand me. I was like, no questions asked. I don't know what it's like to not have, now I know what it's like not to have my father in my life, yeah. but I don't understand what it's like not to have a mom. So, bro, let's talk, let's talk that out first. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, you graduated from college. And yes, you only 20 something, 22, 23. And no, you're not going to take over the world. You got some, it, mom wasn't there, bro. Let's deal with that. And so I think it's important, um, you know, Pop called me and Pop was like, 
you know, E, I need you to talk to my son. I was like, listen to him. Here's what I, here's what I told him. And I need y'all, uh, principals, teachers, superintendent, I need you to hear what I said. I said, not only would I meet with him, we need to meet immediately. Yeah. <laughs> we need to meet tomorrow. I need, I let him know mm -hmm. your son is a, your son is a priority to mm -hmm. me. We, we need to meet tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear from him the next day. I said, yo, I told you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know what part of that you heard, but I said <laughs> tomorrow and tomorrow <laughs> passed. So we met the next day. He said, what time? I said, I can do 7 a.m. I, let's do and so I let him know he's a priority but here's the thing I said and language is everything here's the thing that I said most importantly I said I want to meet with your son like he's Jalen my son yes I want to mm. meet with him like he's Jalen mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying like I don't want I don't want to meet with him like he's your son I want to meet with him like he's my son mm -hmm. and, 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 if, and, and if my son was having some tra transitional issues I would stop drop and roll okay <laughs> I would stop drop and roll like it's a fire so I need you to understand. So watch this. Whatever you whatever you can do, do it. We're not asking you to be us, mm -hmm. right? I I said, what time we meet? And son says eleven. I said, yo, what size shoe you wear? He said, an eleven. I had him two pairs. I had a pair of uh, Air Force Ones when I met him, and and these <laughs> AG, AG, AGS Nikes. And he was like, what? Are these for me? I was like, absolutely, absolutely. We could talk, but let's talk. You know. And so. You might have a shirt or you might have a whatever, uh, yeah. a gift certificate. You might have a um, a Target or Best Buy gift card. It might only be 10 bucks, yeah. $15. Yeah. It's not how much you give them. It's the fact that you give them something. They're like, yo, wow, I'm important. So I'm just yeah. saying, we got to make the parents uh, know that they're important. We got to let them know that you're involved. Like, look, I can't just have you run up in my class you know what I'm saying, in the middle of class, you know, but here's the time that you can come, you know, here's the time that you should come. And when you come, here are the expectations. When you, when you come, here's where I need your help. I need mm -hmm. your support. Yeah. And I'm telling y'all, man, if we use these parents, it's just a different, it's just different, man. When somebody tells me, Hey, E, you about to make a certain amount of money. When somebody say, Hey, E, you about to, put your mama in a different situation. It's just different, bro. You know what I'm saying? When you start talking about my mama, I'm 52 years old. You start talking about my mama, it still, it still moved me a different way than you just talking about 75 grand. Like, I'm not against money. But when you start saying, hey, you do this, we're going to open up this door for your mama or uh, the, guy, the Rams. Like, hey, we can't pay you what you would normally get, but we got some tickets for the kids. Oh. You know, we got some other opportunities. We're going to help you with the Super Bowl experience. You know what I'm saying? We're going to buy some books. We're going to make sure that, you know what I'm saying? If we go to the Super Bowl again, they're going to have a different experience. You know, I'm like, well, then let's go there. You know, <laughs> you know, like, let's go. If, you, if you're telling me that me speaking is going to help these babies, then it's on. And so, man, when you get parents involved, it's a different energy from the parent. It's a different energy from the child. Everybody's not interested in your little, your little meat test. Your little, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's not interested in your little assessment test. You know, they don't change the names now. They got different okay, names. They switched the names. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But I, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna, talk to me, Katie. I love that you said that um, I want to talk to him like he's my son. Absolutely. Not just, I love that for the kid, of course, but I love that you said it to the parent. Yeah. That's the key piece, I think, is that the parents have to understand how much we love their babies and how mm -hmm. we're in their corner and that we're not, you know, on opposite teams, but that we're on the same team. So, um, of course, I love that for the kid, but I, that was the piece that just stood out to me the most of what you said is that we're making sure the parents know how much you care about the child. Um, and that gets Absolutely. them involved in a whole different way, right? Can I add this piece here? Um, when I think of parents, and I'm a parent, so I have a 10-year-old son and a five-year, four-year-old daughter. She'll be five later this year. Um, um, it breaks a parent's heart if every time they hear from a school, it's something negative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, that's a, that's a man, my, if I call, get a phone call and it's, hey, I got to tell you something about, man, my heart just feels a type of way. Mm -hmm. um, what we learned and what we taught our educators and what we do is we often call with good rapport, let parents know something positive. Hey, listen, Andre's doing phenomenal. He had an excellent week because parents just want to have a peace of mind. Yeah, if You can give them that peace of mind. They will run through a wall, not only for the PTA, the whole school principal, everything. And I'm reminded of, of there's a story I learned about trust. 
And parents will just want to be able to trust you. And here's the, the story goes. Um, it was water and it was fire and it was trust. They took a journey into a forest and water said to the person, hey, listen, if you if you lose me, keep your eyes on the ground. Wherever you see the gr grass growing, that's where you'll find me. Fire said, hey, listen, if you lose me, just look up in the sky. Wherever you see the smoke, that's where I'm at. And trust turned around at the person and said, listen, if you take your eye off me, you may never find me again. You may never find me again. Having trust from day one with that parent will take us as educators a very, very long time. Yeah. And, and, and that trust comes from communication. We have to constantly communicate with our parents, the good, the bad, the ugly, but constantly communicate. Time can't go on. Parents haven't heard from a schoolhouse two, three weeks, months, whatever go past. If it's something positive, get it out. Don't only call when there's something negative. And I do know parents do appreciate that when you bring parents in and show them the art on the wall, the, the paper that your baby wrote or the assignments that they're doing well in. And even the high, it's not even always about the lowest performing young people, even your highest performing students. When I was a high school principal, I never forget, I had a group of young people come to me and say, you know what, Dr. Townsend, you know, all the only thing we do is talk about the bad kids. You know, we got PBIS for the bad kid, the bad, the bad. Well, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything. I said, you know what? That is true. We have a lot of young people high performing. So then the thought goes to as an educational leader, how do you support the lowest performing students and the highest performing students at the same time? Is raising the floor and the ceiling at the same time as both and you can't negate one because if you have a schoolhouse with a thousand kids, every last one of those young people are important and every last one of their parents and guardians are important. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to put together the best communication plan possible using every avenue from text messages to social media to the email and all call system and communicate with your parents, not only the events and the dances and the lunches, but also things that are going phenomenal with the kids and things that needs improvement. And those parents will ensure definitely buy in and be a part of that team for that academic year. And by the grace of God, those have been some of the tactics that I've used and I've been extremely successful in my career by using the parent as a part of the solution. Yeah, I got a question, Doc. Yes, sir. So in terms of your parents or guardians who are not as involved, mm -hmm. Uh, like some parents, they at every meeting, you know, they at every parent teacher conference, but you had those kids where you notice they don't show up. Yeah. Right. So how do you re-engage, you know, parents or guardians who are not as involved as we would like them to be as administrators or educators? You know, that's a perfect question. So um, this is a, a, a tactic that is very, very successful, especially if you have the resources to do it. Home visits are key. Home Love it. Home visits. I mean, well, I've that showed it to cool. man. Listen, I've showed it to some family homes. Have have powwows. Everybody crying. I'm crying. You know, we didn't have the whole situation. You know, I've been in the situation like uh, ET or Dr. Thomas. You know, where you know I get young people to close off my back. So a lot of times, this lapel pin. You know, I I, I keep about a hundred of these, and young people I meet walking up and down the hall, just chopping it up with them. You know, I see someone doing next. I say, hey, look, this is from me to you. It's a gold standard. You keep that. And kids come to me. I still got my pen, Doc. I still got my pen. I said, and parents say, where you get that from? Well, Doc Towns again, and then it starts a conversation. Whatever that conversation starter is, you have to ignite the schema of that young person and that parent. So home visits have been a, a major, major um, cheat code for, for a lot of the execution of educational leadership for me. And we so you got to take the jacket off sometimes. You got to unbutton that, let that tie down, unbutton that collar and walk into the home. And, and parents will invite you. You know, you don't just pop yeah. up now. You got to plan yeah. it. But they will yeah. invite you in, man. And, and then when they see that level of support, for someone said, man, you're the high school principal. Or, man, you're the superintendent. You at my, what are you? I'm like, hey, yeah, I didn't see you. You didn't see you, the super. I was looking for you, though. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then also showing up in place of, it's not a competition. It's letting the parents know, look, I got your back. I know you can't make it to the game, but I'm there. And guess what? Your baby put up 30 points. And we shouting them out next week. You know, it's really celebrating. Every young person in that schoolhouse is important. Every family is important. Everyone have different levels of resources. The goal is to meet them where they are. 
and level them up. I said it previously. I always say it, and we talk about it. You set the bar, you meet the bar, you exceed the bar, then you raise that bar, and you repeat, 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 and that's how you get to the level of um, execution that you want. Love it. I love it. And keep reaching out too. Like you you mentioned, Vandale, those ones that maybe aren't as involved, it may be because they don't have that level of trust you're talking about. And so Mm -hmm. we have to not give up on them and keep reaching out. So I had a student a few years ago that um, was a senior and I had been continually calling home and not getting an answer, but I left her message finally letting his mom know that I was trying to help him apply for college. And so I wanted to get some insight from her and she called me back crying and said, I don't, I haven't always gotten positive phone calls from the school. You know, she was just nervous seeing like the school number calling. And she said, I, you left me a message saying you're helping him apply for college. I'm so excited. You know, she was just really, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm calling for. Like, like he wants to go to college next year. I want to make this happen. Let's work together um, and develop this relationship with a family where I could help support that. But I did have to call several times because she didn't have that previous level of trust mm-hmm. to answer my phone call. And so I think she also was touched by that. I'm not going to give up until we get in, in contact so we can work together for the best Power. way to support the kids. You know, if you keep calling, especially for something negative, you're going to get blocked. And then you're going to say, hey, out of the parent, don't pick up. I can't get in contact with That's going to block your number. <laughs> you yeah. keep calling for something negative. <laughs> yeah. You know, and again, I want to I want to circle back and say this superintendents, principals, teachers, there are going to be challenges, you know, in our schools. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's inevitable. Yeah. There are going to be challenges. I need you to look at parents as a task force to help come up with solutions for some of the challenges that you have. Yeah. Remember again, they have they have a they have resources that we don't have. Oftentimes in the actual community where the school is, you're talking thir- two, three generations, you know, have lived in that community. They know the community. They know who's in the community. They know, you know, they know everybody in that neighborhood. Right. A lot of times you're a principal or teacher coming in from another uh, zip code, you, you know, traveling into that area. You don't know a lot and you're trying to solve problems with little resources. These individuals have been around. They went to the school. They know some of the teachers, right? Mm -hmm. And so use them um, as a task force to help come up with solutions for the problem. Look, just go to them and say, hey, we're having a problem with attendance. What would you do? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what would you do, right? Don't let the parents get involved. Because when the parents get involved, now you got the churches that are involved. Yes. So now you got you got pastor involved now, and pastor is involved with what's going on. You know, so now now, now you strengthen it to you know the family, the community, the church, right? And then if you and, and, and if you do that and you get that going well, well then you get some of the local businesses, right, to to start supporting now. Now you get yeah. the local stores to start supporting. We got the Myers right next door to my church. Donate mm-hmm. book bags, right? Uh, we got the we got the Walmart up the street, you know, working with us, right? Mm-hmm. I just matter of fact, I just had Katie's pastor call me this morning, like, "E, we need to get together, you know, let's mm-hmm. let's let's do coffee." I was like, "All right, let's walk." Yeah. Like, I need to walk. I'm, you know, what I'm saying I don't need to be eating and drinking. I'm at that age where I don't have a metabolism. Sure let's, let, 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 let's go walk, you know. But now imagine two churches coming together. Love it. You know, now 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 I'm at you know, and so I want you guys. To understand that a lot of times you're doing more than what you have to. You're trying to solve more. Now you're using energy that could be used a lot more effectively mm. by getting the parent and involved, Got the to. community involved, the church involved, the businesses are now involved. And I'm just being honest, man. I um, I um, I, you know, I never even thought about this, uh, Von Dale, But when I got to um L.A., um, one of the guys was smart enough to connect me with the chaplain. Mm. And uh, the chaplain and I started oh. talking, and it's like I didn't even know he was already a part of Extreme Execution. Like oh, he, 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 he started, you know, what I'm saying so. He's like, yeah, I've been oh, trying to okay. get in touch with you. I've been trying to meet you. You know, what I'm saying like, I'm already in your program. And so I said to him, let's 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 do it together now. Why? Because you're with them weekly, and you've been to get you've been with them seven years. Mm. So you mean with oh, these guys wow. on a regular basis? I'm new, trying to break in. You already there. Let's do it together. So when you meet yeah. with them, let's just come. So. Um, so, yeah, to all my superintendents, principals, teachers, you already have an in, 
uh, house, powerhouse. They, they already are there. Now we just have to find a way to utilize them, give them their marching orders, give them a few resources, some parameters, you know, some benchmarks, man, and let them go to work on behalf of their babies because these are their children as well. Yeah. And if you and, and don't put them in a situation where, you know, I tell CJ all the time, he's like, oh, E, man, you know, you uh, you got it. I said, listen to me, if you bring me to a podcast or a car, I got to get the mic. Like, I'm not, I'm a player, bro. If you don't want me <laughs> playing, don't bring me to the, like, don't bring me in. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to bring me, I got to get some PT time. And so some air time. <laughs> I, I got I got to have it. Like if you don't want me to talk, that, that don't invite me. But if I come, I got, I'm coming with my work boots on and there my work go. hat. Let's yeah. let's get these parents off the bench. Yeah, sure. let's get them off the bench. You icing them. You get the parents off the bench. Let's get them in the game as the six man. Let's get them in there and let let's let them help us. All right, before we get out of here, of course, the round robin boy for me. We'll start with Vondell. Vondell, talk to the Talk to them about parents. Give us that 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 one uh, closing moment. Yeah, yeah, just include them as a part of the foundation of what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. parents want to be heard. Uh, they want to be understood. Even if you don't take fully their advice, include their voices. Their voices matter. And they're your biggest external stakeholders. Think of them as a customer, right? Without the parents, you don't have students. Without the students, you don't have a school. Love and you will have a job. There you go. <laughs> then, <you> know, no. <laughs> Love it. Hey, Katie, let's, talk to me. Let's also have two things real quick. Include them in our initiatives, right? When we're planning for new, exciting programming, let's make sure our parents are included. So in our playbook program, that is a staple piece of the program is we want parents involved. We want them knowing what we're doing with students. So as we're visiting schools this year, we're making sure that every place we visit, we get to meet and love on the parents as well. And one of those places I want to shout out real quick, um, the YMCA in Brooklyn yes. visiting really soon, the Bedford Street Vescent YMCA. Um, so we're going to shout out Sonia Atherley over there. She helped get yes. 100 UOU books oh. for students. 100 of them. Oh. So they're going to have a when we get there. We're so excited. Um, and we're excited to meet with those parents as well because they're so important. And one last thing too, because I love to leave people with a book recommendation. If you're looking educators for books to help you engage parents, um, this is one of my favorites. It's called New Ways to Engage Parents. And it's by um, Dr. Patricia Edwards, who is from MSU and one of my I, uh, beloved professors there. But it is all about engaging parents and it's so, so good. So grab that for sure. That's my mother's name, Patricia Edwards. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, mother-in-law. All right, Doc, round us out. And, and I'll say this, this um, I got a little bit, I'm talking to my, to my educators, I'm trying to impact. Listen, be visible, be vocal, be vigilant, but with our families, be vulnerable. Allow mm -hmm. them in, allow them to support. They're a part of the team. They're a part of the team. They're not on the bench. Actually, they're, they're, they're warming it so they can get in. They, they want you to call the play. You call the play and tell them to run it. I promise you they're running. And when we're talking about educators, we're talking about anyone that has a stake in that school system, that school district, that school house. Anyone that has a stake is considered an educator in my eyes. Yeah. And um, some of the best educators, in my opinion, that I've had have been coaches. A lot of coaches are really good with young people and families. So always loop that coach in. When I was teaching, I was a physical education teacher. And I always had the rapport with the young people. And that catapulted my career into administration because, you know, they, they, they pay you a few dollars if you can herd sheep. But if you can herd cats, they give you a million. <laughs> so, you know, you, when you learn some of those skill sets, um, uh, you, you'll be absolutely phenomenal. But include that parent, be vulnerable with that parent and allow them in and be a part of the solution. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hey, now to Coach B, we'll see you guys next week. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Mass Impact, the education podcast. And welcome to the principal's office, where we recap and review some of the most impactful points from today's broadcast. Now, on today's episode, we were talking about building parent relationships, and we had our special guest, Andre Townsell, on the show today to help us do just that. One of the first points that was made on today's episode was that parents need to be the 12th man on the field. They are important. They're like our special teams. They cannot be overlooked. If you have a great offense, you've got a great defense, 
and all of a sudden it comes time to make that special play, that onside kick comes up, and you cannot execute on that, that could be the difference between winning and losing. In the game of education, it's more important than ever to have parents on our side. That's our secret weapon whenever we need to make these moves with those children in the classroom. We have to have them on our side. It's super, super important. The second point that was made was that involving the families changes everything. Think about it. We're trying to build an educational team, and we've spoken about this before. It's not just teacher and student. It's teacher, student, superintendent, family, mentors. It's an entire team that's focused on helping these kids develop into the best that they can possibly be, and parents are an integral part of that entire equation. You know, we've sometimes got to think outside the box for ways to involve families, engage them outside of just an open house or teacher, uh, parent-teacher conferences. Sometimes we might have to use social media, right? Sometimes we need to have meet and greets. And these might be a little bit different. These might be newer ideas, things that haven't necessarily been done as much in the past, but we've got to use modern strategies for the modern world. We've got to improve our way of thinking to reach these parents. And sometimes we just got to do whatever it is takes. Invite them into the building to share with others about their cultures, about their gifts. Get them involved in the classroom itself. Get them on board and make sure that they know how important they are. When we affirm them, they in turn are invested in us and our shared mission to help their child develop into everything that they're capable of developing into. E.T., toward the end of the episode, gave an example of telling a parent once that he was going to talk to his child as if he was his own child. That was so, so powerful, right? Not only do we need to make sure that our kids know how much we care about them, but the parents need to know how much they mean to us as well. And here's something that doesn't get talked about enough. A prerequisite for the parents knowing how much we care about their kids is us showing that we care about the kids every single day. We need to have tangible proof evidence that we can point to and say, I care about your child so much. Here's exactly what I'm doing to make sure that I am fully invested in their development. So what can you point to? What can you show a parent? Hey, here's what I've been doing with Johnny specifically to work with him. Here's what I've been doing with Sarah specifically to work with her. If you have that documented, it makes it a million times easier to literally prove because as much as I would love to believe that we can go to a parent and say, hey, We've been working with your kid, giving them so much one-on-one special attention. We're so invested in their education. We love them just like they're our own. Not everyone is going to believe you. We've got some skeptics out here. So be ready for that. Be ready for the parent who might not be uh, uh, mentally all the way there, ready to accept that you are just as invested as they are in their child's education. They might be a little bit disassociated. They Maybe they've tapped out from that level of investment. You have to be able to show them, hey, here is how invested I am. Here's how I can prove it. And I want to be partners with you. I want us to be teammates in this journey of getting your child the education that they deserve. Guys, I remember when I had a coach who cared so much about me that it literally put my mom on defense, right? Watch this. We were living in Huntsville, Alabama, and this coach owned a gym. It was a gymnastics coach. He owned a gym in Chattanooga, Tennessee, about three-ish, three and a half hours away, right? And he said to my parents, I want your kid to come train with me for free because he knew some stuff that was going on at my gym back home. We didn't have some of the equipment, didn't have some of the opportunities there that he had at his gym. And he saw something in me and he said, come train with my competitive team guys for free for as long as you want. No obligation to compete for my gym, no obligation to ever pay anything. Just come on because he knew that we couldn't afford it. He said, come out here and train with my guys for free. My mom was so taken back by that. And I'm not saying you got to give up stuff for free. This is just an example. But My mom was so taken back by that, she literally confronted my man and asked him, what's in this for you? Why are you doing this? My man held his ground. He said, absolutely nothing is in this for me. I just see potential and I want to help you guys out. Be so invested, add so much value that people almost start to question you. Give it a shot. I challenge you. What can you do between this episode and the next episode? What can you do this week to add so much value? that people are almost like, what's wrong with this guy? That's my challenge to you. So until next time, thank you so much for watching Mass Impact, the education podcast, and we'll see you on the next one.